Okay, so welcome everybody to this evening's webinar. Uh, I just wanted to double check. Uh, I know you guys can hear me okay. Can I just check you know, you can all see that the first screen okay? It should say building your customer base. Perhaps you can just type in. Ah, wonderful. Thank you, Sue. Good. Good. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, John. Good. So that's what we're talking about, basically, your customer base. Um, and this is uh, an, one of a series of eight webinars that I run called the Clean Easy Circle of Success. Uh, you can see we're on the third one there. The first three are really about the retail side of the business, the, the kind of the Facebook start selling, the catalog selling. And um, then next week uh, and the week after are more about the sponsoring side, building a team and supporting your new team members. And then the last three, six, seven, and eight, are really personal development. Um, and they, they could be in any order. They, I tend to do them, um, you know, as I say, I start off at number one, go around to number eight, but then I start all over again. And they're all recorded. So uh, at the end of the webinar, I'll show you where all of the recordings are. So if you've just started, for example, and you wanted to, you don't want to wait five or six weeks till the, the number one getting started um, webinar, then you can go and watch the recording of the one that we did a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I'll show you where all of those are in a moment. Uh, well, at the end of this webinar. So, customer base. What is a customer base? This is what we're going to be covering this evening. Um, why do customers order from you? There's, you know, there's so many different places customers can order from these days on the internet, but in the high street, and all sorts of different areas. So, why would they order from you? Um, I'm going to talk a bit about customer bonding and customer loyalty. Because one of the things that you will find is that customers become very loyal to you. And having a, a base of loyal customers is what we call our customer base. So, um, a quick question. Just, I know there's a, certainly a couple of new people on board this evening who probably have got no idea how many customers you can build. So, can I just ask everybody who's been in the business for more than a week or two, how many customers do, do you have? At the moment, and I know it kind of varies, but just to give us a rough idea for, for new starters, these are people that order from you, I guess, at least once or twice a year, and I'm sure a lot of them will order a lot more than that. Oh, hi there, Neil, thank you, 400 plus. That's not bad, not bad at all. Anybody beat Neil? Anybody do more than 400 customers? Ruth, thank you, Ruth. I know you've just started. Kerry Ann, I'm 200, that's amazing, Kerry Ann. You've only been going for seven weeks, fantastic. Well done, Carol. Thank you. Oh, brilliant. Thank you, Mustafa. So I'm guessing you haven't got any customers just yet, or maybe just a handful, but this is just to give you an idea. I know, I mean, Dave Trowell hasn't volunteered his numbers just yet, but I know Dave's got um, a thousand and more customers. Karen, 300 plus there. So. Uh, typically, the customer base is anything from 200, 300, 400 customers. These are people that order from you regularly. Maybe not every time you deliver a catalogue, but certainly, you know, sort of two, three, four, five times a year, and, and often more. I, I pretty much every distributor that I know has got that one or two customers that order every single time they deliver a catalogue, and it's a, a fantastic customer base to get to. So, how do we get there? Well, as you can just see there, at the beginning, in month one, we all start off exactly the same. We've got a bunch of catalogues, um, you know, if we're doing the catalogue side. So, yeah, guys, sorry, I, I should take a step back just a moment. At the moment, I'm just focusing on the catalogue side. I will go on expand on this a little bit on the Facebook side in a moment. But So, if you're only doing Facebook at the moment, just bear with us. But on the catalogue side... Uh, when you start off, you've got zero customers. Maybe your mum or your sister has promised to order from you, so you might have one. But let's suppose each week you deliver 200 catalogues to houses near where you live. That might be all in one go, or you might do 100 at the beginning of the week, 100 at the end of the week. But about 200 a week is a good place to start. If you're looking to build your customer base more quickly, or you're wanting to earn money more quickly, then you can deliver the more than 200 a week easily. Lots of people do that, do a lot more than 200 a week, but that's a good starting point. Um, and what you might find is that you might find 20 of those will order from you. Now, these are just averages, just for the purposes of showing you this. You can easily get more than that. 
sometimes you'll put 200 catalogs out and just get a handful of customers. So, but just to give you a bit of an idea, so suppose 20 of those people order from you the first week that you put them out. If you do that four weeks on the trot, trot and remember consistency is really important, putting your catalogs out every week. You can't do one week and think, oh, I'll take a couple of weeks off now and then do another week and then you know, have a week off and then another week. And You know, you have to be consistent. Get your catalogs out every week because your customers love the fact that, they're, that you're reliable and that you go back to them regularly every four weeks. So, at the end of month two, if you put your 200 catalogs out every week, on an average, you would have maybe 80 customers at the end of the month. Um, and so, when you go back to the beginning again, because obviously once you've delivered your catalogs in your first week, you'll move on to new houses for the second week, new houses for the third week, and so on. And when you get to the end of the fourth week, you go back to the beginning again and deliver back to the same houses that you delivered to in your first week. Now, if some people have said, oh, I'm not interested, thank you, or they've thrown the catalogue away, you wouldn't go back to those houses. But all the other ones, the ones that ordered from you, the ones that didn't order, you go back and give them another chance. Because what you'll find is in that, the, the first week of your second month, each week you're delivering 200 catalogues, but 20 of those now are to people who ordered from you the first time, and 180 out of the other houses that didn't order. And what you will find is that some of those people that didn't order the first time will order the second time. Now, isn't that interesting? Because you would think, well, why didn't they order the first time if they wanted to buy something? And who knows, there's all sorts of different reasons. It could be they were busy. It could be they just didn't get a chance to have a look at it. It could be they didn't look through all the catalogues and then they looked through the catalogues a second time. It could be they were away on holiday. It could be they've got more money now. All sorts of different reasons. But I guarantee you, you will get some people will order from you the second time and they didn't order the first time. So now you've got 20 customers the first time plus another 10. So you've now got 30 customers in that couple of streets. Again, you do that each week for four weeks. By the end of month two, beginning of month three, you now have 120 customers. So you carry on doing, you know, as I say, consistency is really, really important. So each week, you're now delivering to 30 customers and 170 catalogues to other houses that haven't ordered from you yet. And you will get orders from those houses that, that didn't order the first month and the second month. And the, again, there's all sorts of different reasons. I've had people order from me after I've been delivering to them for four, five, six months, and all of a sudden I get an order. And I'm thinking, goodness me, what happened there? Why did they suddenly order? And who knows? And what is it? Ours is not to um, question why. Just keep following the system, and I guarantee you will keep getting customers each time you do it. Um, so by end of month four, beginning of month where we end of month four, that you've now got 160 customers. You've picked up 40 each on each week that you're going round. And so now, with your 200 catalogs, you're delivering to 40 customers, 160 catalogs to other houses. Again, you might have kind of 10 orders or so from people that didn't order the first month or the second month or the third month, and so on. Now, while you're doing all of this, there will be some people that say, oh, thanks very much, but I really don't want a catalog. I'm not going to be ordering. And that's fine. You know, Not everybody will order. So cross those people off that don't want the catalogs. There will be some people in your area who maybe already have a distributor. So if someone says, to be honest, I'll get a catalog from Sue. Sue's been delivering to me regularly for months and months and months, years and years in some cases, um, and I won't be ordering from any other distributor, thank you. And that's, that's fantastic when that happens because it shows you how loyal your customers will be to you if you continue to service them. So cut all those people off that don't want a catalog at that point. And after about six deliveries to each house, that's what I would say. So you're doing this sort of every four weeks. After you've been to every house six times, at that point, you're probably going to get the majority of customers who will order from you will have ordered. Now, there will always be exceptions because obviously sometimes people move out, other people move in and so on. But once you've done it six times, cross off the people that don't order from you. And... Um, 
and because what you're then doing is you're starting to become more effective you're, you're just delivering to your customers at this point now what I would say is during those first few weeks if you can place an order every single week now the reason for doing this and it, sometimes it can be a little bit of a, a, a decision you have to make because obviously if, if at the beginning you might be struggling to get enough to get free delivery and you might be thinking is it really worth me paying a 3.95 delivery charge or a 5.99 delivery charge but the advantage of doing that is that your customers will appreciate prompt delivery if you're at the beginning finding some areas they're not getting many orders and you know it takes you three weeks before you can put an order in and then you deliver back to customers who'd ordered three weeks earlier they're probably going to think you're going to be like that all the time and so you'll probably find your orders start to drop whereas if you're putting in an order every week your customers will really appreciate the fact that you get you deliver to them so quickly and they will um, order from you over and over again so and and to be honest that's never been easier now than doing a drop ship you know clean easy have said um, that it's okay for you to put a drop ship in as long as you're not abusing it and putting one in every day but you know if you can put in an order every week of 50 60 pounds as you're building it up it, as I say it might it might be that you need to put more catalogs out to get more orders but try and put in an order every week so that your customers get their goods quickly and then depending on how much you want to earn you can carry on doing this to keep delivering moving on to new areas you don't have to stop when you get to the end of six months you can then just take your catalogs and deliver to a new area that you haven't delivered to yet and start all over again and gradually you can expand and expand and build up more and more customers to the point where for example if you keep going you can have get to the point where you've got 800 customers and there are many distributors in the business that have got 800 and more and each week you can be delivering 200 catalogs just to customers and the beauty of this is that the average order per catalog increases when you first start off we say on average you'll get about a pound per catalog that you put out usually when you start off if it's a bit below that and then you'll kind of work up towards the average and then you'll go above that and the more and more customers you've got the the, the bigger your average will, will get and it's really not unusual to have cust uh, distributors who regularly get five pounds seven pounds ten pounds per catalog that they put out you can put 200 catalogs out get well over a thousand pounds in orders every single week and that's a fantastic place to be because of all the hard work that you do building up your customer base you get the rewards if you persevere with it and that's your customer base basically and the beauty of it is you get a lot fewer bad pickups because you're only delivering to your regular customers and your income is a lot more stable then because you know pretty much how much people are ordering. You will always have that customer that always puts in something for four ninety nine, and other customers that doesn't order very often, but it's fifty pounds every time she does. And you kind of get to know in advance pretty much what, when your customers are going to order. So it's it's a lot more predictable, and you can rely on that as a good income from your your customer base. So this is all very well in theory, but a quick question. I, I, a lot of people ask me when when they're first thinking of joining the business, but why would people order from Clean Easy? Catalogs are so old fashioned, nobody uses catalogs these days. Why would customers order from you? And I just want to ask you a question. Before you joined, I know some of you have only joined recently, but those of you who have been in the business a little while, if you can remember back, had you heard of Clean Easy before you became a distributor? Yep, yeah, Carol Han. Sue had, yeah. I know I had. Sue, <laughs> Georgie used to deliver to me. No, Neil hadn't from Liverpool. Perhaps that's because you're from Liverpool, Neil. Never thought about that. Yes, yeah, Lynn was a customer. Yes, 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 yes. So, the point there, and that's just a very small sample. Clean Easy have been around since 1923, so that makes them 92 years old now. Um, everybody's heard of clean easy you know if you didn't get a catalog your mum probably had a catalog or your sisters had one so many people have heard of the brand so it's a well-known and trusted brand and it's been established as I say for well over 90 years now and so at the beginning your customers will buy 
because they've heard of the brand. They recognize the catalog, they recognize the logo, they know the name, they know you are a reliable and a trusted a, a distributor of a reliable and a trusted company. So they will order from you just because they recognize the, the, the catalog name. And then what happens is over the next few months, while you're delivering regularly, your customers get to know you and like you and trust you because you're reliable, you're polite when you go and deliver their orders, you're friendly, you're asking how is, you know, how is Mr. Johnson, how's everything okay, you're helpful to them, you know, if, you, if they need a, a letter posting or something like that, you can help them out. Your customers get to know, know you and like you and when that happens, something kind of magical happens, it, it kind of changes the way that they order from you then because they stop buying from the catalogue and they start buying from you. And, and that's really important because what that is, is it's the start of the loyalty that your customers show. Because then if another distributor joins the business in you know, 6 months, 12 months, a year later and starts delivering to where you've delivered in the past, your customers are going to say to them, oh thanks very much but I already get a catalogue from whoever, you know, Chris, um, and I'm really happy with Chris's fantastic service so I, yeah, I don't really want another catalogue. Thank you very much. Um, and that's a great place to get to again because your customers, as I say, are very loyal to you. But how can you, how can you, how can you reinforce that? And that's a really important thing to do. And this is what I call customer bonding. And um, it's really, really important part of the business. And it's not difficult at all. It's really, really simple. And um, it's probably what you, you do with all of your friends and all of the people that you meet anyway, but you kind of don't, don't think of it as, as customers, really. Uh, quick question, I know some of you have uh, heard this question before, but um, anybody who's not sure about it or hasn't heard it yet, um, what is everybody's favourite word? Anybody know? Me, Neil, yeah, could be. Any other thoughts? Any other suggestions? I, me, myself, I. The name for Sue, name, yeah, Lynn, can. Mary, I like the one. I can. That's a good one. Yeah, a couple of good suggestions there. Um, I'm going to suggest to you that their favourite word is their name. They like to be called by their name. Everyone likes it when somebody recognises you. You know, we clean easy even built a huge business out of recognition because we ask you to stand up at the front of the a meeting and we call your name and we say, well done, bud. I'm doing a fantastic job. And people love that recognition. People love being recognised. So, Customers are no different. So if they tell you their name, then write it down. When you're going around with picking your catalogues up and you're making a note of whether you've got the catalogue back, whether the customer's ordered from you or not, if the customer has written an order form and you've got their name on, then write down in your round book or wherever you're keeping your records their name. And if they tell you their first name, that's basically giving you permission to use it. If they put down Mrs. Johnson, then you call them Mrs. Johnson. If they put down Sue Johnson, then say, Hi, Sue, because they've given you their name. So when you're then delivering the catalogue a week later, a month later, obviously if they've, you've delivered an order, you'll be using their name then when you, when you go around to visit them. But when you're delivering the catalogue next time, as you're going down the street, you'll have your notes as to which houses to deliver to and which ones not to. And when somebody's ordered, you can check what their name was. So if you happen to come across them, you know, they might be in the garden doing a bit of weeding or, you know, cleaning the windows or whatever they might be doing, polishing the car, just make sure you understand that you've taken a note of their name because you probably won't remember them all the, the first few times you go round. And just a big cheery wave, oh, hi, Mr. Johnson, I've just got your clean easy catalogue again. It goes a long way because they, they really appreciate the fact that you've taken the time to remember their name they don't know that you haven't remembered it and you've written it down in a notebook, but that, that you kind of use their name. And that's a great way. They'll suddenly think, oh, gosh, he's only, I've only ordered from the chap once and he already knows who, what I'm called. So use it every time. And even what you will find, and obviously it depends on the size of your, the town where you live and the area where you're delivering, but certainly where I am, it's kind of a smallish market town, I see my customers all the time. I can't go into the town without seeing one of my customers in the coffee shop or in Sainsbury's or you know, in the car park or something. And it's just, after a while, you get to recognise all of your customers and their names and just are always saying, oh, hello, Mr. Johnson, how are you? Um, and sometimes, especially at the beginning, you can see them look at you and think, 
I know that chap from somewhere, but I just can't think where, because obviously normally they're on their doorstep collecting an order from you, and when they see you in a cafe or something, it's a bit of a, so sometimes it's just a sort of, you know, unless you've got your clean easy t-shirt or your clean easy fleece or something like that, which I, especially this time of the year I've got on all the time, um, then you, you know, you might just sort of say, it's Chris from Clean Easy, and then suddenly they'll kind of, ah, oh, I recognise who it is now, and that's great. Um, and also, what you will find is that you start to get to know a bit about them. Because you might ring them up to ask if it's okay to deliver an order, and they say, oh, I'm really sorry, I've got to nip into a hospital. My son-in-law has just been taken in, and I've just got to go and make, take him some change of clothes, or whatever it might be. So, the next time you go and visit, you know, it's, it's, it's a great idea just to say, oh, how's Jim, your son-in-law? I know he was in the hospital last time. And you'll get to know about their dog. Whenever you've got a customer who's got a dog, always make a fuss of the dog, ask what the dog's called, and then make a note of it. Because if they've got dogs, they love, they love their dogs. All of my customers do. And even my sponsor loves her dog. Um, and um, once you get to know the dog, and you get to know the dog's name, then again, you, you're, kind of, you're building this rapport with the customer. Because if you love the dog, and the customer loves their dog, then you've got something else in common. So... Just make little notes. If you, you know, not, you haven't got a fantastic memory. You know, I haven't got a perfect memory, but um, you know, I just like to make a little note about my customers. And after a while, you kind of get to you know, when, when you you built up your customer base and you've been delivering to them long enough, you get to know the husband and the children and the dogs, and you you know they they just kind of like friends after a while anyway. So what else? You do? It's always worthwhile looking out for special occasions. Usually, if you've got you know a, a a uh, house with a window at the front and you know often people will put cards up in a window so you can tell if it's somebody's birthday or an anniversary so you just sort of say oh is it a special occasion um, and it's great to just make a note of people's birthdays because then you can kind of say oh happy birthday you can even buy your customer's birthday cards and um, on which subject that this period that we're in now the last couple of weeks and the next week or two coming up I hope you're all writing your Christmas cards for your customers this is a fantastic way of just building that, you know, that bond with your customers, and I, I love this time of year because so many of my customers give me um, birthday, uh, Christmas cards back, um, and a great thing to do is just, you know, either you can make some yourself or buy, you know, the box of the 30 traditional Christmas cards from Clean Easy, you know, buy yourself half a dozen boxes or however many you need, um, and just handwrite them and, and you need to prepare this a bit in advance if you've got a big customer base obviously and um, just handwrite them saying you know Merry Christmas Mrs Johnson from Chris and then I usually put in brackets clean easy if they you know if I, if I don't know them that well and um, and just deliver them at the same time as you deliver the catalogue during the last four weeks before Christmas and I always put them not inside the plastic bag but outside but at the same time so that you know, even if they're not wanting to order from you at that point, they you know they're going to get your their Christmas card from you. Um, and uh, I guarantee every time you do that, you will get more orders because people really appreciate the fact that you've taken the effort to remember their name and send them a Christmas card. Um, and you don't have to limit that to just Christmas. As I said, if you find out their birthday, it's brilliant. You can do Easter cards. You can do all sorts of things. You know, if you're a creative person, pretty much. Every time you're going round, there'll be something going on. Um, a great thing that we did, and this worked fantastically well for us, um, it took a little bit of effort to do, but it was really worthwhile. Um, a couple of years ago, it was Clean Easy's 90th anniversary. So Sarah made um, a load of little little biscuits, just covered them with kind of chocolate icing, and then uh, piped a number 90 on them. And we just gave, put in a little kind of cellophane bag to each of our customers, a couple of biscuits uh, and just a little card saying we're celebrating our 90th anniversary. We'd just like to share this with you and, and have a little biscuit on us. And I got so many stories from customers just sort of saying, oh, it was so nice. I'd been out shopping and got soaking wet, came home and there was a little chocolate biscuit waiting for me. And it was just such a lovely um, touch. And one customer who I'll never forget who said, oh, this is fantastic. How did you know it was my 90th birthday? And it turns out she was born on the same day that, or you know, within a couple of days of when Clean Easy first started in 1923, and it was her 90th birthday. So that was just such a, a kind of a, a, a funny kind of uh, thing to remember. So that's just a few examples, but you know, don't think 
it's, it's a bit like on Facebook. We talk on Facebook a lot about when you're creating your selling group, it's about being social. It's not about going sell, sell, sell. And it's the same with the catalogs. If all you ever do is deliver the catalogs, deliver the order, deliver the catalogs, deliver the order, you will get business from that. But if you just take a little bit of care and attention and do a little bit more, your your business will be so much more um, robust. Your customers will stay loyal to you and will order from you over and over again. So all of that activity results in a bunch of customers who know you and they like you and they trust you. And because of that, you'll get lots and lots of regular orders from those customers. Okay, so that's pretty much what we've covered. Now, I've, I've focused primarily on the, the catalog side. And one of the big differences between the catalog side and the Facebook side is that with the catalog side, you're, you're, kind of, you're only in front of the customer for a day or two once every four weeks. And, and that kind of regular and reliability, if you like, between you and the customer creates a, 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 really, a really loyal bond. On Facebook, it works differently because you're, you, know, you can be in front of your customer every day. Then the, the building that rapport with the customer is done a bit differently. And often you might have customers that you don't see very often. If, you, if, you, if you're getting things delivered directly to them, or you know they're, they're not ordering from you very often, and they come and visit you, so you're not seeing them when you're picking up the catalogs. So doing all of the social stuff on Facebook, sending and um, you know having little quizzes in your Facebook group, for example, is a great thing to do. And um, I know Angela. I haven't seen if Angela's with us this evening. Angela's done a, a one, a little quiz in her Facebook group. Not really a quiz, but it's where she said, um, "Which is your favourite film?" And and this has to be one that you've watched at least five times, and you would watch it again. And she's got loads and loads of people commenting on that, and you can kind of reply back to that, and just you start to build a bit of rapport with the people that order from you regularly, enter your quizzes regularly, enter your competitions regularly. And it's it's a different way of, of doing business. It's you know it's totally different on Facebook, but the that building that base of loyal customers, the, the principles are exactly the same. You need to find some information out about them. You need to relate to your, your Facebook customers. You need to kind of share things with them. You know, what's your favourite film? And oh my God, yeah, I really like that one as well. And my kids love that one. We went to see that just the other week. And you're already starting to find out which of your customers have children the same age as yours, and all sorts of things like that. So, um, I hope that kind of helps. Where are we now? It's about half past eight, guys. So I normally try and, and keep this down to uh, half an hour. So that's the end of number three: building your customer base. Next week is all about team building. We're going to make a start on, on team building and it's never been easier doing team building now, especially if you're if you're in the Facebook side and if you're not, then you really should think about it. But team building is next week. I mentioned earlier that uh, these webinars are all recorded, so I'm just going to stop